OMG! <laughs> I'm back on YouTube! Cash, I'm back on YouTube! <laughs> okay, this is just me testing out like the positioning of the camera, the sound of my little mic. I need a new one. I tested it out on a TikTok video already and it's kind of shitty. So this will have to do for now. Um, I don't think those, yeah, they go together. I love my husband so much because he always does the laundry. We're going to get to all of these burning questions all of you asked me on Instagram. Cash, they went a little hard on me. But we're here to be real and raw and always tell the truth. I watched that Denny Hamlin guy. You know who he is, the cup driver, on that new docuseries on Netflix. And... Junior said something about him, how he's like, he can't tell a lie. I told Derek, I was like, hmm, maybe I do like Denny Hamlin after all. It's not that I didn't like him. He just, I had a different favorite cup driver. But I think going into this season, Denny Hamlin's going to be my favorite cup driver because that's me. I cannot tell a lie. Last moving of the camera. We're going to get right into it, you guys. Right into it. Here we go. Wait, let me make sure I'm recording. <sighs> Here we go. Here we go. I'm nervous. There's some good questions on here and I'm ready. I'm ready to be back on YouTube. This is the start. This is the start 2024. Okay, let's go. Let's get right into it. Okay, here we go. There were so many questions about my racing schedule in 2024. I have not announced anything because I had nothing to announce. I have had fans very angry, angry with me in the past being like, why do you always keep everything a secret until last minute possible? Because as soon as I find out, I tell you guys, I don't know I'm racing until last minute possible. As an athlete, think about that. It's like you don't know if you're going to play or race until 48 hours before the race. That is terrifying. There's so much prep work that goes into it mentally and to have to try to prepare in 48 hours sometimes is very difficult. Um, that, only, that only happened a few times, but it's not fun. And I told everybody, my whole team, like my family is my team, okay? And then my agency that helps find sponsorship. I'm like, I'm not doing it this year. I'm not doing last minute deals. It's fucking hard and I'm over it. I'm so over it. Um, hopefully you'll see me at Daytona and it's practically a last minute deal because it's like two weeks away. Um, not saying yet if I will be in Daytona or not, but I will probably be there. I'm not sure yet. We are working on things, but like I said, I didn't want to do these last minute deals and here we are doing them. <sighs> Anyways, okay, I want to be at the track as much as possible. I want to race in Xfinity. I would love to race trucks. Like, whatever I'm given the opportunity to race, I want to take it. And I feel like that's where it bites me in the ass every year these past three years is because no matter what the opportunity is, I take it. I'm like, do it for the plot, Natalie. Derek, talk me into it. If you're new here, Derek's my husband. Um, and he always talks me into it because he tries to hype me up, you know, best case scenario all the time. There's so many things that are out of our control in racing. So he's always trying to, you know, be positive. In these last few years, I've been racing with low budget teams and doing last minute deals. And I'm like, why should I not take this opportunity? So many people would kill for these opportunities, but sometimes it sucks because they don't go as planned. So yeah, hopefully this year in 2024, it's different. I can feel that I'm already sweating because I'm nervous about how this year is going to go with racing. I do want to say I would really like to road race more this year. I've road raced with Tony Abbey quite often in the past. He is my favorite person in this world. When it comes to team owners, I absolutely love Tony Avi and his whole team that works at the shop and on the road. They're amazing over there. So I've been telling Derek, I'm like, 
Derek, you need to get cleared and start racing in NASCAR more. I want to also be at the track as your wife. I want to experience that more. I did that twice last year. I loved it. Yes, I was jealous and wish I was on track with him, but it was so much fun. Um, So that's that with racing. But let's get into more questions. Let's start with some easy ones. We got the racing stuff out of the way. And if you have more questions about anything racing, just comment down below and I will try to answer the best as possible. Okay, easy. Do you have a twin sister? I do not. I don't have any sisters. I have a brother. He's a few years older than me and he is a model and an actor and he lives in California. He is my best friend. I love him so much and sometimes he comes to the races and some of you have already met him. A lot of you know who he is. His name is Leif Offerdahl. Yes, we have different last names. So that's why no one knows I have a brother. You know what? This is an easy one. Kind of weird. There's some weird people out there. A lot of feet questions, but the one I'm comfortable answering is what size is your shoe? And you know why I'm comfortable answering this? Because I'm a 2.5 youth, kids, little boy, little girl shoe. And it is so difficult finding race shoes. And my race suit company, that makes other stuff as well, like under the stuff you wear under the race suit, gloves, shoes, all that stuff. One year they made me special shoes to fit my feet, like a special order. I still have them to this day. They are disgusting, but they're the only shoes that fit me and they are still big on me. So I have baby feet. Someone else asked me on here, I can't find it right now, but while we're talking about it, I don't know if they asked me like how much I weigh or my height. But so many people meet me for the first time in public at the track or like at an autograph session. The first thing they say to me is, wow, you're so tiny. You're smaller than I thought. And here's the thing. I look so much bigger on TV and on camera because I'm five feet, about 100 pounds. I go anywhere from 95 to 100 lately. That's about what my weight's been. So I'm like extremely small. And so many people are always thrown off about that. Um, So if you're watching this and you haven't met me yet and you might be meeting me at an autograph session or something like that, please don't say, wow, you're tinier than I thought. Because that makes me feel sad sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Like someone that's very tiny and short, you understand. (laughs) Okay, there is some other easy questions on here that I want to get to. Um, Someone asked me about my infusions, and I'm on Symphony. I believe I'm saying that right. I will put the drug name on the screen so you know exactly what I'm on. When I arrive to the doctor's office to get my infusion, I go every eight weeks, and it only takes about an hour. Once I arrive and once I leave, it's about an hour. The infusion time of when I'm in the chair and the medicine is hung, that's only in about 30 minutes. So it's like a really fast infusion. The infusion I was on before Symphony was Remicade. Remicade worked very well for me until it didn't. And those of you who are on Remicade or have been and have experienced the same thing, allergic reaction to it, you know what I'm talking about. It was a little intense, Um, my throat started to close and it was scary. So scary that they called Derek to come in because I was terrified and it gave me like a whole ass panic attack, um, which made everything worse. But Symphony is the sister drug is what they said. So it's amazing. I feel so good. Um, just looking at pictures of me a couple years ago before I started my treatments Like, holy crap, a huge difference. My whole body looked inflamed. Like, I was just swollen everywhere. I was in so much pain all the time. Yes, I still get flare ups, but oh my gosh. And I could make a whole video talking about having arthritis and being at the track, like for track days for a whole weekend from, you know, if we have to be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or whatever that looks like. I can tell you like the ins and the outs of like how I work through those days when I have a flare up or when I can start to feel a flare up coming or how I try to keep the flare ups away. There's just so much that goes into it. 
And when I first started racing in the Arca series, I was horrible at it. Like I just was not good at controlling it and controlling myself, but I figured it out and it's, I'm still learning every single day. So that's that. That's, um, and if you're new here and confused on what I'm talking about, I was born with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. So my body attacks itself. And for those of you who know, once you have one autoimmune disease, you slowly start to get others. So I have a few now. Do you miss Wisconsin? Wisconsin is where I grew up. And yes, I miss Wisconsin. Derek, my husband, my sweet, sweet husband, we talk all the time on if we did not have to live in North Carolina for racing, we would live in Eagle River, Wisconsin. Oh my gosh. It is just so amazing. And so much of my family is up north in Wisconsin. Oh, if we weren't racing and we had a different career and our career allowed us to live there, we would be there. We would already be trying for babies and our life would be a lot different. But we are addicted to the sport and we want to be here in North Carolina and we want to be racing cars as much as possible. And like I said, we are addicted to the sport. <laughs> um, with that being said, though, North Carolina, we recently just moved into a barn dominium. I'm in my bedroom currently. Hold on. Let me change the camera angle so you can see more of the barn dominium. Okay, camera angle changed. Um, the sun is very bright, so we won't stay here long. But our bedroom is wide open to the whole house. Behind me is the kitchen. Behind the kitchen is the living room. Yes, the barn dominium is unfinished. No, we will not be closing in our bedroom with a wall, maybe some kind of heavy-duty curtain type situation. But we kind of like it. It's very New York style. And Derek and I went to New York together for the very first time. And it was Derek's first time. And after we've been in here for a while, we really liked the little New York feel of it. Wide open. There are so many windows. This place is a dream. We're sitting on about 12 acres. Most of the acreage is all fenced in for our puppies to run around in. Maybe build a racetrack. Um, as in a dirt track, maybe get a micro. We're really close to Millbridge. So yes, we moved into this barn dominium. We are trying to finish it ourselves. We have hired some professional help throughout it. Um, the biggest step that's happening now is we need to finish all of the drywalling and then put in a ceiling. I don't know if you can tell, but the ceiling is just open right now. The insulation is spray painted black, so it does look super clean. The rest of the insulation is the yellowy spray foam looking insulation and it's very ugly and really looks like an unfinished home but it is one two three four bedroom counting the primary and counting the primary bathroom one two three baths and then there's a half bath so it is very big big enough to one day raise a family sorry i keep moving around i'm trying to make it interesting he likes sunbathing He's my sweet little boy. This is Cash Monkey, my dog. Okay, back to some more questions. What's your all-time favorite ice cream? Oh, my all-time favorite ice cream. I would usually always say mint chocolate chip. Um, so I think I just have to stick with mint chocolate chip. Like, I know it's like seems like an old person ice cream and a lot of people get made fun of for liking mint chocolate chip, but I like mint chocolate chip. Okay. Here's something that so many people asked me if I'm going to start an OnlyFans and I feel like any other woman in the sport would be like afraid to answer this question because we get looked at as sex symbols so much and we get like put under this microscope of like you need to be more like the men to be taken seriously and talking about this question, you know, no man would probably address this in NASCAR unless they were like trying to joke about it. But no, I probably won't be starting an OnlyFans. Um, I do have a Patreon account, which is where a lot of my fans come to support me. And similar to like streaming and subscribing to my stream, which I haven't been streaming lately because where we're living right now, we need better internet. 
But having these amazing fans that I have, which are most of you watching this right now, they subscribe to my Patreon. They support me as much as they can through that. And it lets me do what I do. Hi, Derek. Are you coming to answer some questions? It lets me do what I get to do to be able to go and find funding and sponsorship to try to make it in this crazy, crazy sport. So I'm so thankful for my Patreon account and for all of those fans that support me there. Um, but that's the best way I could answer it. I don't know how, how else to say that. Did you go over your 2024 racing plans yet? You're joking, right? I was just kidding because there's a lot of questions about it. <laughs> I was just seeing how it was going. I didn't expect to be introduced into the this video. This is Derek. I don't know if they can see you. Here, lean in a little bit. This is Derek. Um, is there any questions for Derek? Wait, I have something that I wanted to read to you. How's married life? Good. Today, I had my first experience where I was like, holy crap, I'm actually married. Someone was asking me like, about I was cleaning the windows and he was like have you seen those videos of the dudes that clean the windows and they make designs and stuff and it's in very all the windows? like ASMR type amazing yeah and I was like for sure if I cleaned the windows on this house I would get a setup like that and try and make fun designs but I said my wife does it and she does it this way and this is how she wants it done so that's how I'm gonna do it and then after I said that Period. I was like holy shit I am married Period. I have another question for you. How many times have I told you that I want to see you in a race car and I believe wholeheartedly that you will be a full-time driver sooner than later and it's going to happen faster for you than it happened for me, that it's been trying to happen for me, that I totally 100% believe it in my heart and... What was the question? Do you believe it? Like, do you believe that one day you could be a full-time driver? He's only done two NASCAR starts in the truck series. Yeah, if you do work you hard it? enough, sure. Okay, I believe it. I believe that you'll be able to be a full-time driver someday, soon, and that hopefully soon. I will be able to do a full season I'm about myself. aged out of the sport. <laughs> Shut up. That's There's drivers that are in their 40s. Okay, have fun. <laughs> Back to the questions. Favorite thing to drive? Wait, no, let's not answer that one. Actually, yeah, let's answer that one. Favorite thing to drive. And then under it, it says, except for driving me crazy. Okay, take it back a notch, please. Um, weird. I don't know how I'd be driving you crazy. But the favorite, my, one of my most favorite things I have driven was a sports car. It's just whatever I'm in. And if they're handling good and we're having a good day and I'm learning and I'm having fun, that's my favorite in the moment. I feel like my first YouTube video back, this one that we're in right now, is going to be like over 30 minutes. And I haven't even answered that many questions. Okay, I found a question. I found a question that I read and I was like, I need to answer this because it's freaking hilarious. Do you race in Victoria's Secret ever? And I'm assuming this guy is not asking about the one female driver, her name is Tony, who was sponsored by Victoria's Secret for one of her truck races. I'm assuming he's not asking, like, do I race for Victoria's Secret like she did. I'm assuming he's asking if I wear it while I'm racing. No. And I'm hoping some of the men out there don't wear regular underwear either while they're racing because if you were to ever get into a fire that shit will melt to your skin so freaking fast so everything we wear under our fire suit is no max but this is my pitch to victoria's secret if you want to make a bra and underwear made out of no max for us race car driver girlies i would wear it <laughs> one of the questions i got asked was when would it be possible to spend a weekend with you i want to spend a whole weekend reading you. I had to read this one out loud for all of you to hear because I would say at least 20% of these questions are disgusting like that. I will be blocking you, whoever wrote that in. Um, but just proves my point that I really need some more female friends online. 
there's so many male fans of NASCAR and that's why there's so many male fans of all of the drivers and the ones that are like sorry I think I muted the mic for a second I love all of my fans that like truly love me for who I am and like want to see me succeed and they're rooting me on and they're like true fans but the ones that are like a little crazy and write in weird questions like that like that's what makes me like really want to bring in more females to NASCAR because they like me because of all the girly things I like. I made a TikTok about it anyways. Um, I'm just rambling now, but I need some more girlfriends. I need some more girlfriends on here. And I'm going to try my hardest 2024, one of my goals are, to bring in more of a female audience, become friends with those females, go to the racetrack with those females. If they want to come hang out with me at the track, they are more than welcome to. I will get you that hot pass, girl. You can come sit on my pit box. We can hang out. We can be best friends. That is my goal. (laughs) Ooh, I love this question. How do you tune out all the haters from social media? You just do. Honestly, we laugh at it because every day when you're a happy person and excited to wake up every day to do the things you love, it's like it it's like those people I almost feel bad for them because they're so miserable and saying those miserable things. But you know, I don't know. It took me a couple years. I mean, and still some sometimes to this day, some comments get to me and break me down. But majority of the time, they piss me off and I get mean. Like, I'll say these mean things out loud about them to Derek. And I'm like, oh, God, please forgive me and please help me be stronger. Like, when I get hurt by something or feel as if I'm not accepted, so a lot of the times, like, in the world of NASCAR, like, I feel like NASCAR itself they don't really accept me and a lot majority of the teams do and majority of the drivers do but like the sanctioning body itself like I just don't feel welcomed there and I get so pissed off and angry and hateful towards them and like I'm trying to work on that in 2024 someone asked me what my goals are well like outside of racing my goals are to when I'm hurt to not get pissed off get angry and say mean things even if it's just in my own household to myself or to my husband or to my family I'm gonna try to still stay positive and not get so angry towards those people and here I know I'm just rambling but I saw someone on TikTok talk about how when you watch Cinderella Everyone pictures themselves being Cinderella. No one pictures themselves being the villain. No one pictures themselves being the stepmom. They are Cinderella. They're the main character. They are happy. They're living their best life. So when someone's hurting me, I just need to remember they're probably not intentionally trying to hurt me, except for those haters in those comments. They are definitely trying to hurt me. But like overall in life, every day, people that I run into or everyday experiences or even just when you're going to CVS to pick up your medication someone might be having a bad day and take it out on you they picture themselves as Cinderella and they are probably not meaning it personally so that's my take on that found the question I want to answer what's the price range to which it costs to race an Xfinity car I touched a little bit of this on my TikTok and I really wanted to talk about it on here. So here's the thing. NASCAR, I feel like, is so secretive about all of the finances of like how much it costs to go racing. A lot of the things are public, like the payout and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. But when I was watching Drive to Survive, people were like proud to talk about how much it costs to go racing and that's billions of dollars f1 is way more expensive than nascar but like they're proud to talk about it because it is it's like unreachable if you think about it it's like these drive drivers are untouchable it's unreachable the amount of money like it takes and the amount of miles they travel to each track it's like insane right and they're proud of it i feel like nascar kind of like hides it it's like this good old boys club. No one talks about it. No one really knows. So like 
teams could be upcharging you and you have no idea. So when I first got into the sport, I had no idea. My sponsor I had at the time, um, he was very open to when he was talking to me and the amount of funding he was spending. And then like, so like the team owner, the sponsor and I, everything was very open. The communication was very open. So we all knew what was going on, which is amazing. Sometimes that's not like that in the sport. So I was so thankful for that. And I learned a lot. So in the ARCA series, it cost about $100,000 to go to Daytona. Sometimes other tracks too. Daytona is like the big one. It always costs a little bit more. But for ARCA, it costs anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000, depending on what track you go to. Now you go to a truck team. Same thing. About fifty dollars to $150,000 because the, those top elite teams, like those teams that are winning every weekend, they're like one hundred and fifty. dollars At least in my experience talking to these teams, this is what I was experiencing. So when my sponsor and I were shopping around for teams after the first two years of me racing in ARCA, We landed at DGR, as you know, and when they told us what it was going to cost to do 17 races or whatever it was, we were like, no brainer, we're going to switch. It's about the same amount of money, and why not start learning in the vehicles that I want to be racing in weekly? So boom, we jumped. Now, fast forward two years, we're out of the truck series. I don't have that sponsor anymore. We're trying to find funding on our own, Derek myself, my mom, my dad, my auntie Sue, we find some good sponsorships. We make it work. We put together about five races and we shop around. All right. Are we going to go truck racing? Are we going to go Xfinity racing? What team? Where are we going to get the best deal? What do we think is going to be the best fit? It was cheaper to go Xfinity racing than truck racing. Maybe not so much cheaper, but like the same price. So like, no one talks about this in the sport and when you're a new driver coming into the scene and you don't know this i feel like sometimes it like stabbed me in the gut when i found out all of this information like two years into it i was like what i was so thrown off i felt sick to my stomach that i didn't know this information sooner and you know what part of that's my fault because i didn't ask around and i should have but now i know (laughs) now i know oh derek really wanted me to answer this question this is the last question I've spent too much time sitting on this bed. I was supposed to move around with you guys throughout my house, my new bar dominium that's unfinished for this, but we've just spent all our time right here in bed with Cash Monkey. Penny, my other dog, is nowhere to be found, but this is the last question per Derek's request. Derek did not send in this question. Someone else did, but when I read him these questions, he said, please answer that one specifically. And the question is, Biggest stereotype about NASCAR wives. Derek was like, the stereotype is that they're all wives. There are husbands too. There are husbands too. But you know what I said? I think one of the biggest stereotypes are is that they marry for money. That is like, come on, guys. Yes, most NASCAR drivers make a decent amount of money and have the nice houses on the lakes and the nice cars and this and that and fly in the private jets. Yes, a lot of them have that. But you know what? There are some way richer men in the world that if these women truly wanted to marry for money, they probably wouldn't have married a NASCAR driver because this season is exhausting to be the wife. To do the things you got to do to support these drivers is insane. They signed up for way more than just to be a housewife. They are all in. All of these wives that you see at the track, they are all in. The support they give, their husbands should be thanking them every single weekend. They are so lucky to have their wives there supporting them like they do because they wouldn't be able to do it without them. And that's why in every interview, after every single driver wins, they think their girlfriend, fiance, or wife because they know damn well that those girls do so much for them. Anyways, that's the last question. I hope you enjoyed my first YouTube video back. I had so much fun. Please comment down below any more questions, anything. I'll try to respond to everybody. Also, please comment down below what type of videos you would like to see. I have in mind what I want to do on this channel, and it will be epic if we're able to make it happen. But I love you all so, so much, and I'm sorry if this shitty little mic sounded bad at some points of the video. I will purchase a nicer one for you. 
this was just a test run and you were a mistake to buy but we are learning i i will get a better mic i'm sorry you're so not it mike you're so not it we're gonna get a nicer mic but i don't know maybe you guys are like hey it sounds good to me and I'll keep this little one around for a little longer. Also, I filmed all of this on my iPhone. I do have a very nice vlogging camera, but my best friend has it right now. I will get it back though, so we can start making some great content for you guys. Ah, I'm just rambling on again. I should have a freaking podcast, but not a racing one. But we can talk about racing in my podcast. But there's just too many racing podcasts. I don't need another one. I need like something, I don't know. Comment down below what you think. All right. I love you guys. Bye.